Hello everyone, it's Linda Hayes. I'm sitting here in one of my tiny homes in beautiful Belize. And because I bought property in Mahogany Bay Village, a lot of people ask me a ton of questions. So I wanna cover some things to watch out for when you're buying property and to be aware of, and also just general tips on how the community works and what you should always do when you're buying property in Belize. So first I'd like to give an overview of the area because it's a major source of confusion for some people. So if you've ever stayed at Mahogany Bay at the resort, which is the Hilton Hotel, you can see that there is a great house with a swimming pool, and then there's lots that you might be staying on. It could be many different types of units, but they're located on Street 2, 3, or Street 4. And the map on the right is the one that highlights the Mahogany Bay Resort, which is the Hilton. So again, you can see that the other streets with canals aren't on that map, there's only street two, three, and four located because that is the resort itself. On the left map, those lots are actually not uh, showing because that's the Hilton Hotel. So street one, five, six, seven, and eight are the private residence part. Now street four is kind of a hybrid. When you're driving down street four, you'll see the Hilton units first, which is part of the um, resort. But then um, throughout, there's actually a mix of private residences and Hilton units. So my tiny homes are actually located about halfway down street four. So basically the sales manager with the hotel is David Kafka with Remax. So his office is located right near the rum and bean in the community. And you can also see Will's Remax office as soon as you drive in. There's also other Remax brokerages that sell within Mahogany Bay and I'll show some of those listings coming up and even other uh, brokerages could sell as well, depending on who has the listing. So first of all, in Mahogany Bay, most of the lot sizes are 50 by 75 in phase one, although the end of the canal has larger lots and they're also bigger in phase two. Now, the good thing about the community is that the developer does offer really attractive financing and there's also resellers that may as well. And another great thing about the development is that Dave Mitchell, who was the developer, put every lot into an individual international business corporation. And that's great for many reasons, including how stamp tax works and if you wanted to sell one individual unit on a lot. And if you want more information about how IBCs work and how you can buy prop property in different ways, make sure you reach out to me. Now, the one thing to note about financing, I love financing. Obviously, it helps your profit if you're an investor. But one thing to note here in Belize, if you finance, you do not get title until you pay off the property. And there's a couple disadvantages to that. One is you don't get a vote in an HOA if it's in the, uh, if the community is in an HOA like Mahogany Bay is. And the second thing is that the stamp tax will actually be charged when you pay off the land. And if you pay stamp tax, which is a percent of the value on a lot, it's gonna be way more affordable than if you pay it at the end when you have a million dollar house on the land, if that was what you were to build. Next thing I wanna point out is if you look online for lots, some websites are out of date. For example, I saw lots at 130,000 back when I bought, despite the price at that time in 2020 being 150,000. So what I wanna do in this video is give some examples of some current listings and also tips as well, which is similar to what I did on a video I recently posted about Secret Beach. So when you're buying property in Belize, just like anywhere else, you have to consider what the purpose of your purchase is. If it is an investment, there's cash flow to consider as well as possible appreciation. And many properties in Belize are mostly about appreciation and ROI on cash flow does tend to be lower than North America. So that's something to consider. I know many owners on the island that are just happy they break even on their property. And of course that depends on what you buy, but generally speaking, you're gonna find that a lot of people are buying for lifestyle purposes. So now I'm going to talk more specifically about the Mahogany Bay Resort, which is the Hilton. So I love staying at the resort because it is an amazing beach club and a fantastic pool. And actually one of my friends on the island said the beach club was their favorite beach here because I was staying at one of the resort units at one point when my property needed to have some uh, repairs done. So my favorite unit to stay in is the upper keeping suite and that's part of a fourplex and I just really like the feel of that. And all the units in the Mahogany Bay Resort are individually owned and available to purchase. And so what happens with the resort is that you share the profit and expenses with the resort, which is similar to condo hotels in North America. So the MGM in Vegas, for example, has condo hotels in Canmore, Alberta, which is kind of a resort ski place. Same idea. 
And this is the model of many of the resorts on the island, including the Marriott and the Best Western, along with a ton of non-franchise resorts. And the reason that this is the case is because there is no traditional bank financing in Belize. So when people are building resorts, they look for investors to buy the individual units to help fund the construction. Now let's talk about the private residences. So there are approved floor plans you can choose from, but there's also custom options available so you can pick what you want. Of course, that has an extra cost if you go with something custom. And you are able to choose both wood or concrete for your bills in the private residence side. I chose wood for my tiny homes because it was the more affordable option, but concrete now has less of a price differential, so a lot of people are moving to that. Now, because this is a development, all plans have to be approved. And you can see if you're looking at the community that everything, for example, has to be white. So that's one of the things required here. Now, there is also an HOA agreement in the community and the fee is $350 a month, although most contracts for sale said it will be deferred for a period of time. Now, when you're buying in the Hilton, it's a little different because there they take all the expenses of the resort and share with all of the different units based on the type. Now, the thing to note that some people are confused about, if you've just walked through the community, you see the beautiful pool, and you think you have access when you build a private residence, that is not the case. Private residences have no beach access and no pool access for the Hilton. And that is the case whether you're drinking or not, and there is no pay structure to use the pool either, although some resorts in San Pedro have that, like the Marriott does, whether you can basically there, you can buy a day pass to use it. So this is why I actually built a pool on my property and many other people are doing that in the community. So they have their own private pool. And then in addition to that, there is a community pool going in in Street 1. So if you'd want the community pool kind of feel, then you can drive over to Street 1 and use that. And some of the houses are really close to that. So, you know, that's great to walk over. But I find driving in the community is pretty typical because it is a very large community. So now let's do a comparison of the options. So on the expense side, the Hilton basically takes all the resort expenses from last year. And for this year, they're gonna split it with each owner based on the unit type. And on the private residence side, you pay all your own expenses, including garbage removal, landscaping, pool maintenance, etc. And on the revenue side, the split actually coincidentally is the same. So the Hilton is at 80-20 split. The private residence is also 80-20 when you're using their property manager. And then in the options for plans, this is the big difference. The Hilton has certain units that they have. They have four plexes, they have uh, three bedroom houses. You can have private pools in some of them. There's all kinds of different plans, but you definitely can't do any custom plans. Where in the private residence side, for example, my tiny homes, I wanted to do them specifically in a certain way, so I had to go on the private residence side. In the rental options there are differences as well so the hilton you have to rent through their resort management you are allowed to stay in your own unit along with your family and friends but you certainly can't go do any short-term rentals on your own and on the private residence side you can so you can rent out through your own property manager you can use theirs or you could do it on your own but either way that you do it make sure you understand that you need to get a hotel license for each individual unit this is a big thing that i was not really aware of the difference in how this works and how long it takes and i'm actually still waiting for my hotel license and i had possession of my tiny home last july so it's over a year and i still am not doing short-term rentals so i'm only doing long-term rentals because of that and then let's talk about the amenity side. So the Hilton, of course, has the beach club and the pool and the private residences do have the pool under construction, which will be a big advantage when that is uh, finished. And then all the other amenities that you pay for, obviously you can use them no matter which one you're in, like the food shacks, rum and bean coffee shop, the spa that you pay for. All those amenities are available no matter which side you're on. So now let's go through some other tips. So on the internet side, fiber optic is something that I really want. And after I built, I actually found out there was no option at all for cable TV. And I can only get smart internet, which has a receiver on the roof. Now it generally does work well, but I obviously want fiber optic. So the street one of the private residences does now have fiber optic. It was added recently. And Digi, which is the provider, says it 
it happened because many owners requested it. So if you do buy on another street, make sure you put in a request to Digi, which I already did. And I put a request or I put a comment on the Mahogany Bay Facebook page. So to tell people to do the same thing, because if everybody does it, hopefully we'll get it added to the other streets. And the Hilton actually did put fiber optic to all of their units. So there's no issue with that on in those units. Then I also want to talk about cash flow. So if you're building for investment purpose, if it's either a private residence or a Hilton unit that's not constructed, you have to know that you have to pay money up front and you have no cash flow. So a lot of times I don't recommend pre-construction purchases because of that fact. If you could buy a resale instead, you can get immediate cash flow. Now, at times you can't, there's not available, so then you might have to build. But if you don't have to, obviously from an investment side, often it's not uh, good to do it. The other thing is if you're buying for personal use or even for investment, I recommend everyone to come visit first. Um, if you're planning to live here, then you should rent a place first, make sure it's right for you. Because I know many people who have bought came to Belize and have since sold. And if you want more details on why, I can tell you. I mean, I love it here, but not everybody does. And some people want something different than what they actually bought. So consider what you like. I love coming into Mahogany Bay uh, for many reasons. I talked about the fact that there's the, the hotel bar there. I like staying at the resort. I've done it because there's a conference here and when my property needs repairs. But after a while of living here, I actually decided to put tenants in my property and rent something else. And that is because I like to live in a property in a community where there's other long-term renters and owners. And I found a property like that. And that's kind of what I prefer. So everyone's different and you have to kind of assess that. And you really won't know until you're actually at the place. So as I've mentioned many times on my channel, there's many different real estate brokerages in Belize and many different agents with listings and there's no MLS to see what the options are. So many agents sell their own product only and their own listings. And this is similar to what would happen if you went into an office in a gated community in the US. So if you went into the Remax office in Mahogany Bay Village, they tend to sell Mahogany Bay as well as Secret Beach out of that office. And if you want to go to the Hilton sales office, my friend Clint there can sell both the resort and the private residences, but of course he can't sell outside of Mahogany Bay. So Clint is fantastic. He works with David Kafka with Remax and he is very, very friendly and there is no high pressure sales at all. But if you want to see other options outside of Mahogany Bay Village, you should work with a buyer's agent. And I can give you referrals on that side as well. I have a great gal I work with uh, many times who's helped people find condos or other product to see, but then they can also evaluate what Mahogany Bay Village is like and what other options there are for buying property in Belize. So I recently met a couple who was interviewing agents before choosing one, and that's what I would always recommend doing. And when you're considering a specific area, I did also recommend to them that they meet people living in the area. And they're actually in town for three weeks to look at different areas, see what feels right for them, because it's a place that they want to come as well as rent out. So they're definitely doing it the right way. And it doesn't make sense at all to go through and meet many different agents. It takes a lot of work. And if you have a buyer's agent, they're going to go through all the different listings for you, send you some get your advice on what you like and don't, and then research more. And basically to do that, they have to go into many different realtors' websites to find what is available. So that's why I'd recommend not trying to do that on your own. So now let's go through some example resales. So on the lot perspective, of course, there's still lots available through the developer and those will have financing. And then there's other lots that are available for resale, but those ones you always have to do an offer to see if there's financing, although sometimes the clients will have already indicated it. But I have seen examples where someone has said they don't want to finance, but when an offer comes in for our property, the seller will change their mind. So it all depends. So for resale lots, uh, there are two lots on street four, and you can see them in this picture with the yellow highlighting I put on the seawall. And basically it's a great location for these ones because they're right on street four where almost all of the construction around is started already, which means you'll be under construction for a lot less time. So you can see my tiny homes there in the picture with the little pool. And beside there, one of the houses on the left is almost complete. And then on the right-hand side, it's actually more complete than this picture here. 
And the other good thing is that you're surrounded by Hilton units on the street and across the canal. So the community definitely will be well maintained and everything complete on the street, um, probably in not too much longer. Another option that I've heard of is on Street 5. So there are two lots listed for $170,000, and I've also heard of a couple for $150,000. So those can be more affordable. Now, the ones at 209 on Street 4, um, those have the Seawell already in, which costs about $25,000 to do. So when you're comparing prices, you want to factor that in. And then next, I'm going to talk about some of the actual units that are complete that are for resale. So if you're not wanting to go through the build and you want to buy something that is turnkey, that's the next topic. So on the completed home side, one of my friends actually sold his two bedroom house on street one for 465,000. And there's also Hilton units available for resale currently. So there's a two bedroom townhouse listed for 469. There's also a fourplex for 640,000. And that's basically four of the keeping suites. And then there's a th uh, three bedroom house lot that has two garden cottages on it. And that one is 625,000. And then in addition to all of those Hilton units, I'm actually going to be listing my tiny home shortly for $479,000. So on the completed home front, there typically are a few listings available depending on when you're looking. So I'd be happy if you wanted to reach out. If you're coming to Belize, it would be great to meet you.